I'm Janice and I'm from Hong Kong. I'm currently teaching more of a Pilates inspired workout. So I created my program, which is called Apps Focus. It's a Pilates -art core workout. I created this uh, just to help people to get to understand how to activate the core properly using the Pilates technique. And because people asked me how I got my six pack. So I, <laughs> I guess I wanted to share my little tips here and there. I, I love this question because I, I was the kind of person that started to go with to flow in my career at the point where I left my corporate job in public relations. Uh, that was actually my dream job in my, my dream company to work for. Uh, it was a, quite a, a global agency. But then I realized that for my personality, I wasn't the best fit for an environment that had so many stimulants. So I felt like I was constant, constantly distracted and I'm the kind of person that can only perform in a very focused environment, like a more like a controlled environment. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I was quite lost after that. So the moment that I realized I wanted to become an instructor wasn't like, Oh, I all of a sudden I decided to okay why don't I just become a trainer so how it went was I was going through like a mental health like journey so I was going through anxiety a little bit depression um, and it was induced from my like like feeling lost you know feeling lost at the crossroad where I felt like I studied so hard for university I secured a great job but then I felt like I wasn't feeling that I was using my full potential. Yeah. So there was something missing. I was really lost actually throughout. I worked at Lululemon for a little bit in, in Hong Kong um, six years ago after I quit the, the corporate job because I wasn't sure what to do and I loved the Lululemon um, culture. So I just went there. Um, after that, I realized that, okay, retail isn't really my thing. And at that moment, I was going to a lot of fitness studios um, in the community because th this is what Lululemon is all about, like to get involved in the community. So I was very active in the fitness scene. And one of the instructors at the studio that I, I worked out at uh, asked me if I wanted to become a trainer. And that was the time I was like, okay, that's like a great option. <laughs> Why not? And I was ready to leave retail. So basically that's how I started um, my fitness wow. journey. I love teaching because it really takes my focus out of myself. Um, people would think that Oh, you're you're leading the class. You are the so-called performer. Because um, I teach in a group setting. I teach group classes. Um, I'm known for teaching group classes. Mm -hmm. uh, so people would assume that oh, um, I like the attention um, and and I love showing what I can offer. And but not only that. Um, actually, the favorite part of teaching is uh, putting the focus on others. Actually, and helping them to become the better version of themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, taking that attention away from myself actually also helped me with my mental health. So I, I feel like I'm not only helping myself, but others. And that was, that is something that I really love being a teacher. Yeah. yeah. So it's actually the other way around. You're, you're not like in the spotlight. It's actually them. That's, um, right. yeah. yeah. I would say how to balance how to balance work and your personal life. Yeah. Uh, because I would say people who get into fitness uh, it's because they they love fitness. So basically you're making money out of your passion. And with that, even when you don't train clients and you're during your spare time, it's so easy for you to just get on Instagram and keep reading about like oh like the new workout moves or uh what's like a trendy thing related to fitness because it's something that is so ingrained in your life that 
you just you just do it naturally but sometimes you just feel a little bit too much and it's it takes a lot of awareness for you to take yourself out of that position and be like hey actually i should do something that <laughs> that's less physical related um so apart from managing that um that time and like the mental consumption of fitness yeah. and most importantly more most importantly is to you how to manage your energy with how much you can teach because we got paid by hour right of course the yeah. the logical sense is oh i want to make more money then i'll just try to cram in like six classes a day i mean in the beginning i did teach like six classes a day and then i ended up like going home i felt so tired i lost high because there's too much adrenaline in my system and i also couldn't move i just felt like this uh, when you sit down and rest yeah. all of a sudden like after the adrenaline kind of um kind of flushes out of person system and you calm down and your nervous system and you just feel so tired and drained that um so it's it's you need to know your limits so basically you need to know how to manage your energy because you're constantly giving when you teach but being a great teacher also means how you take care of yourself and you can only take care of others when you can take care of yourself well um, so I would say this is definitely something that I would like trainers to understand, uh, beginners like newcomers who haven't experienced yeah. that. Um, so just to try it out and then see your limits basically. For sure, it's very important because it's an issue that many trainers um, seem to struggle with because we're so focused on giving to others. Um, and sometimes we, we can forget ourselves um, and right. saying no, it's a very important issue here because like, as you said, it's, it's an hourly rate. So, so yeah, it's, it's very important to just know where to stop. So going online is definitely like a must now. <laughs> Uh, I'm not like a huge fan of online classes, but because of the situation that um, the studios in Hong Kong, uh, the studios were open for a while and then, and then they, they closed and then reopened. So it's like a kind of like a back and forth. So it's like open for two months and then closed for another month and now even longer uh, during holiday seasons uh, and Chinese New Year coming up. So, um, so basically we're really, uh, uh, how to pivot to online classes, Zoom classes. And I've been using this time to uh, film online workouts as well. Uh, so I set up my YouTube channel and then to put more videos there weekly because I've always wanted to do something online because uh, for our industry, for everyone, we know that if we want to scale something, it definitely it has to be you want to make money when you're sleeping, you definitely need to go online. Yeah. Uh, so that's always what I've wanted to do, online stuff. But um, like, uh, like, like we just talked about, like you just want to get paid and then you teach more and you never spend that time to film online stuff. Yeah. Uh, so COVID actually allowed me to focus on that part where I've already wanted to pivot my business model to, right, from teaching to filming and to... Uh, provide more content to people basically and yeah. more accessible in a reasonable reasonable price yeah so that's good <laughs> that you yeah. guys have to do that yeah I, yeah i think <laughs> the situation forced me to um yeah. or gave me the chance to have more time to do something that i've always wanted to do yeah I think that um, globally, we, we have adapted to this new era where people enjoy intimate time now. Like we, mm -hmm. we are forced to hang out in a small group. Yeah. So, um, so we're, we're used to, um, we're used to like personal experience. It's like a little bit more interpersonal, I would say, more of a mm -hmm. personal touch. Yeah. Uh, 
So I think that people would be open to train like one-on-one -on -one, um, if, if they can't afford it financially. But also I think that there, there are certain group that is still afraid of COVID and then the sense of fear has built into their everyday life that they're so used to being distant at the same time. So it's like a, I think it's like a spectrum. Like some people are so in, enjoy like that intimacy with the trainer or it could be like, oh, um, actually virtual works very well with me. And I love how it maximizes my time. I can just work out, shower at home and then work from laptop, super efficient. Yeah. So it depends on the person. So I think that, I think in general, if we're talking about like, future scene of fitness studios, people don't mind smaller and intimate groups. Um, but at the same time, they don't mind the option of training online because they'd rather be safe and they have already found a system that works for them to work and to workouts in a very efficient and optimized way. To be honest, it's so easy to be just very focused on what you do when you become a trainer, mm -hmm. because um, especially, well, I would say um, I, I pre-COVID, I traveled a lot. I traveled to uh, major cities like London, yeah. New York, Dubai, um, Singapore, uh, tried out all their fitness scenes, and I always love to learn from the instructors there. Um, but in Hong Kong, um, I'm usually very focused on what I do already. Um, I got inspiration from um, other countries and other cities. Uh, but I would say the trend in terms of the fitness scene, but not like um, the content I see on YouTube in Hong Kong, because that's like a completely different story, I would say. <laughs> I've been like researching about it a lot and watching a lot of YouTube workout videos. But if we're strictly talking about fitness studios, I would say... Um, we, we, we have limited boutique studios because in Hong Kong, rent is very high. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of um, studio owners are, are not really the instructors. Okay. Um, talking about like premium ones. Yeah. Um, they have like a full-time job in a bank that support the, the studio. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I would say the trend is still still like, you know, like spinning. Um, Cause Hong Kong is quite westernized too. Uh, um, we have like spinning studios, uh, boutique studios with like boxing, um, Pilates. I won't say that we are like very focused, like, okay, this is like a Hong Kong workout. You go to Hong <laughs> Kong and then you see this workout yeah. everywhere. Um, we're quite <laughs> like general, I would say, um, pretty comprehensive. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, interesting. But, but I would say one thing, one thing that's interesting is um, for Hong Kong people that consume YouTube videos, they really love to see fast, efficient workouts. Like, for example, you would see a thumbnail that says, oh, um, 10 minutes to get rid of your love handles. They just love it. <laughs> <laughs> or something like, um, yeah, just like short, efficient workouts and then like tech really catchy phrases um, that capture people's attention. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's more of a trend. People love to know what's the fastest way to burn fat? What's the fastest way to, um, yeah, to lose fat? Like they're looking at the fastest and most efficient yeah. way, I would say. The shortcuts, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say the Hong Kong culture. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, practice a lot. You have to teach a lot. In the beginning, I taught, um, I taught at least like 60 classes a month. Wow. Uh, so I think that, um, it's like the 10,000 hour thing, <laughs> that philosophy <laughs> where yeah. you put, more, put in more hours. Um, you just have to keep on teaching. Um, before I would think that, well, I'm just teaching. It's so hard to improve as a trainer if I just keep teaching and because I'm just doing the same thing repeatedly unless I go to other 
people's classes or mm -hmm. self-learn or being very self-aware, then making teaching so many hours might not help me. So, um, but then actually the time, even though I teach my method, it's pretty much similar every time, focusing on the core. But I realized that even I taught it like over 200, 300 times. I just get new inspiration every time I teach, like the way I observe the clients, how they move, or the moves that I did. I was like, wait, why, why am I doing this move when I can do something else? Like there's something new that you can learn on the spot in every class. So I really believe in putting in the hard work in the beginning. So you gain more exposure as well, because being a fitness trainer, you definitely need the exposure. People talk about you. And sure. the way that people talk about you is to really show up so many times that people see your face everywhere and they feel familiarized. Right. Mm -hmm. So definitely put in those hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say teaching people like really like I've never I've never had a day that I felt like oh I don't want I showed up I show up and I just don't want to teach like I feel bored or I just hate this job like like for me I've never had this attitude in what I do in fitness so um what motivates me is actually um my mental health because what I've learned since the beginning was the more I help people, the more I help myself. So basically my clients also helping me. So I feel that motivation to help them and, and to enjoy what I do too. So every time I teach, I just actually have a lot of fun with my clients because everyone I, I train, uh, the clients I chose to train, they're all very positive. So it's like a synergy yeah. and it's hard to be motivated um, for what, we do I think like at least for me yeah yeah I actually love Melissa Woods I don't know if you follow her yeah, I am <laughs> um, she, she is a mom I'm not a mom um but I aspire to have a career like that like because I've always known that I want to have kids and I don't mind being the so-called housewife, but I do want to do something that gives me a purpose, a sense of purpose. Um, and basically Melissa captures like the future that I want. <laughs> but, like have kids around and while having like a successful online fitness business, um, film content and you work out, you help people, but at the same time, we're also taking care of the family. So that she inspires me a lot. So my motto is to give your absolute best and to conquer your mind. Perfect. And basically working out, uh, while you're working out, while you're pushing yourself, the way you talk to yourself is also very important. Yeah. So the motto is give your best, speak kindly to yourself and focus on the present moment. <laughs>